I'm at the lathe. Now this week I didn't get a lot of time to do turning during the week because I was pretty busy at my day job. And I've also just finished off my second cup of espresso. So not only am I at the lathe, I'm pretty fired up to be at the lathe. Now it's not just uh, the fact that I'm suffering from wood turning deprivation and that I'm pumped up on caffeine that's got me fired up about this video because I've been looking forward to doing this topic for a while because it's not just about cutting curves, it also starts to really integrate uh, the whole idea of cutting angles that we've been looking at for some time now. And that cutting curves is just a logical progression of thinking in terms of cutting angles. And as we'll see, we can even think about our two go-to cuts, that is the uh, cut that we use for cutting side grain and the cut that we use for cutting end grain can be thought of as two ends of a spectrum. So let's get down to business before that caffeine really starts to take over. So what are we talking about, those cuts being two ends, uh, opposite ends of a spectrum? Well, when we were cutting ac directly across end grain, we always had to have a really steep cutting angle, or excuse me, a really narrow cutting angle in order to be able to slice across the fibers. Now, there is a little bit of a range. You, you don't have to be super steep. You can back off a little bit. There is a little bit of a range that you can use when you're cutting directly across the end grain. But generally, you need to keep that cutting angle really, really narrow. On the other end of the spectrum, uh, we saw that with... Uh, side grain, we actually had a very wide range of cutting angles we can use. We can use a really wide cutting angle, 90 degrees, or we can do 45 degrees, and sometimes even a little bit narrower depending on the species. So we had a very wide range of cutting angles that we can choose from when cutting side grain. We also talked about how because when we cut halfway in between it at 45 degrees, because it still looks like end grain, we talked about that you can treat that as end grain uh, using a really narrow cutting angle, just like we did when we cut directly across end grain. But what we didn't talk about yet, and the key here, is that when we're cutting directly across end grain, we're cutting directly across the fibers, directly perpendicular to the fibers. But when we're cutting this 45 degrees surface, when we're cutting a straight line at 45 degrees, we're actually slicing the fibers a little bit more. We're not cutting directly across the fibers, we're slicing through the fibers at an angle. And so the resistance is not nearly as high there. So even though that really narrow cutting angle does work for us, we don't have, we have a larger, larger range at that point that we can work with. We don't have to be quite as strict as we were uh, with um, cutting directly across end grain. So I could cut this at say 45 degree line, 45 degree angle, straight cut, I can cut it at about a 45 degree cutting angle. And I'm not experiencing a lot high, a really high resistance like I would be if I was doing this across, directly across the end grain. And as you can see, that still left a pretty good finish. And we can keep going with this concept just as before when we cut that 45 degree uh, uh, that line, uh, we cut that um, straight cut at 45 degrees and half, 22 and a half degrees. We can use that really steep cutting angle, that really narrow cutting angle, but we can also go even wider at this point because we're closer and closer to side, being side grain. So here I've got almost about a 60 degree cutting angle and I'm still getting good results. Now you may see where this is going. You can see we're almost starting to form. If I go ahead and cut the 45 degree in half again, we still have to stay fairly steep because we're getting close to end grain again. But you can see we're onto something because we've almost got, we've almost got a, a curve just by using straight lines. But there's still one fundamental, fundamental difference between cutting straight lines and cutting curves because even though there's a range of cutting angles that get wider, that we can use get, uh, getting wider towards side grain and, and narrower towards, towards end grain, we can essentially, whenever we're cutting a straight line, we can pick a cutting angle and stick with it. So when I cut directly across, directly across end grain, I use a very narrow cutting angle and I maintain that cutting angle throughout the cut. When I'm cutting uh, side grain, I can pick 
a cutting angle, a really wide cut angle, and just stick with it throughout the cut. Now you, you can change during the cut, but the point here is that you don't have to. You can pick one angle, 90 degrees or 45 degrees, and for a straight cut, you can maintain that cutting angle throughout the whole cut. Same thing at 45 degrees. I can use a really narrow cutting angle and stick with it through the whole cut, or I can use something a little bit wider and stick with it through the whole cut. But if we try to do that when we cut a curve, we're gonna run into trouble at some point because if I try to use a really narrow cutting angle from the outset, then although it's gonna work better, it's only gonna work well as I get further into the curve, when I first start the curve, it's gonna get underneath the fibers and as we know, you cut with a narrow cutting angle into side grain, you're gonna to tend to tear off the fibers. Uh, on the other hand, if I try to go the other end of the spectrum and try to stick with a wide cutting angle, as I come around the corner, I'm gonna start cutting directly into end grain and we don't want that either. So it turns out that the key to cu cutting curves correctly is that we have to adjust the cutting angle as the cut proceeds. So for instance, on that side grade right now, I can use a really wide cutting angle. I can start there, but as I come around the corner, my cutting angle has to become more and more narrow. Until finally, as I get close to cutting directly across end grain again, my cutting angle has to be really, really narrow. Now, there's a whole range. You don't have to necessarily start with a really wide cutting angle here. Uh, you could also, you could, cut in, uh, you could come in at a 45. It's a little bit awkward because I'm right-handed here. But you can come in at a 45, which is fine for side grain. And you can try to get your cutting angle to be as narrow as possible, as soon as possible, and come around. That way. Now, which one is better? Should I stay towards the wider end of the range or should I stay near the narrower end of the range? Or should I try to split it in between, somewhere in between? So I'm halfway between a 90 and 45 and I'm still, in, I'm still decreasing my cutting angle. But I'm sort of in the middle of the range what's access, access, acceptable uh, for the grain that I'm cutting. Uh, now, as long as you're not getting tear out, it doesn't matter as far as the quality of your finish is concerned. What it will come down to is other factors. Um, comfort, uh, whether you're able to get the handle where you need to, to get it to be able to do one way or the other. Uh, for instance, if I, start, if I stay near the wider range of the cutting angles, my tool tends to have more twist as the, as the cut proceeds and much less swing. Whereas if I try to stay near the narrow, narrower end of the cutting uh, range, I tend to have less twist in the tool and a lot more handle swing. And of course, if you do somewhere in between, you'll be somewhere, the, the handle will move somewhere in between having a little bit more twist and a little bit more swing, kind of the middle of the road. Now, what I personally find is that when you're doing spindle work, I find it easier to make curves when I stay near the wider end of the cutting angle. Uh, because I find it easier to make the surf, I find it easier to get the curve by twisting. Uh, especially true if I was making a curve in the other direction, if I was to try to stay with narrow cutting your angles, my body gets in the way. But I find the opposite is true as we'll see uh, when we get to face work. With an inside curve, it's exactly the opposite because we're going to start out cutting directly across the end grain and we're going to go, uh, we're, the cut's going to proceed until we're cutting out, uh, cutting side grain again. So, uh, but once again, that cutting angle has to change to accommodate the grain that we're cutting. So I start cutting end grain. I'm using, a, have a very narrow cutting angle. And as the cut proceeds, the cutting angle gets wider. Now, again, which one is best? Uh, should I stay very narrow 
and only come only reach about 45 degrees as I reach side grain or should I start very narrow and widen out as much as I can as I get into side grain and once again I find that as long as you're not getting tear out uh, either one is fine that it comes down to other factors what I find when I'm cutting curves is that when I, in spindle work when I make my final cuts I rather have the really wide cutting angle I find it much easier to get the curve that I'm looking for but when I'm initially making the cut and there's a lot of material to move I find it much easier to stay about 45 degrees because it keeps the lower wing in play so that I can remove that extra material so if I was to try to if I was to try to widen out real soon right here I don't get much stock removal but if I stay at a lower at a narrower cutting angle I find that it has it's better for stock removal and a lot of times what I'll do is I'll just come back to go over it to my final cut get my final shape I find that wider cutting angle it's a little bit easier to work with So once again, everything that applied to spindle work is going to apply in face work as well. So that 45 degree that we cut with a steep cut with a narrow cutting angle. Sorry, I keep saying steep, but what I really mean is narrow. So just as I could cut this at a very narrow cutting angle, I can also go much wider. And I'm still okay. So, once again, we have two ways we can go about this. We can start with a really wide cutting angle. And use more, and use more handle twists as we transition to cutting directly across the end grain. But I, I find in face work, this is very awkward for several reasons. Uh, one is I really have to drop the tool handle uh, and I'm dragging as a even though I have a cutting angle of about 90 degrees here I tend to be dragging the handle here so I find it much easier to get my handle get behind my handle cut at about 40 degrees in the side grain to get started and then try to get to my narrow cutting angle as soon as possible Looks an awful lot like cutting, like cutting the outside of a bowl, and that's exactly what's going on. Um, the other thing is, I find that if you try to start with wide cutting angles in face work, that the tool handle swing is very awkward. Uh, whereas, if I start at a fairly high cutting angle, uh, if I start at about a 45 degree angle and get more narrower, I get that handle in that horizontal position, and I find that all that, that handle swing that happens when you have a lower, a uh, narrower cutting angle, it's actually quite convenient in this case because I'm pulling the tool towards myself. Now what actually happens a lot of times when, when you're doing this for bowl turning is because you have a flat bottom, you've already got somewhat of an angle started. So a lot of times with the bottom of a bowl, you can just start right away with a narrow cutting angle and you're good to go. But if you really wanted to have, if you really wanted to have a, a complete bead, uh, like say in the bottom of a, uh, a, a, a footless bowl, you need, to, you need to make that transition at the beginning. So about 45 degrees, and get narrow as soon as possible. And just like in spindle work, when we go to cut uh, an inside curve in face work, uh, everything's just opposite. So we start out, we start out cutting 
directly into end grain. And we are cutting on this wider and wider as we get out towards side grain. So they've got side grain right there. And you might recognize this. This is similar. This is a common shape that you see today on the underside, underside of the platter. But once again, I find when it comes to face work, I find it works better to stay near the narrower, narrow, narrower end of cutting angles because if I come out and try to get this too wide, there's a lot of handle movement. My tool comes way up, and you can see it gets kind of fussy. So I tend to stay really narrow cutting angle. And as I enter, as I get towards side grain, I find it easy to stay about 45 degrees or so. So that's all there is to cutting curves. It really comes down to those avoiding those same two problems we've been avoiding all along. Uh, one, when we cut uh, side grain, we want to avoid using a narrow cutting angle so we don't get that tear out. And two, uh, we don't we want to use a wide cutting angle when we get into end grain because now we're cutting directly into end grain. Uh, when we were cutting, making straight cuts, uh, avoiding those problems was simply a matter of picking an appropriate cutting angle uh, and sticking with it. Uh, and, but when we got the curved cuts, we had found that we have to adjust the cutting angle as the cut proceeds in order to avoid those two problems. Now when you're practicing these cuts, practicing straight cuts and practicing curved cuts, you definitely want to think a lot about the cutting angle. Is my cutting angle correctly? Am I near the wider end of the range? Am I near the narrow end of the range? But when you get back to turning projects, you don't want to think about it too much. You don't want to overthink it. It's kind of like the way a writer uh, approaches grammar. Uh, a great writer needs to know grammar really, really well. But when he's writing, uh, he's not thinking about grammar. He's thinking about what he's writing uh, until if he runs into some kind of trouble and he can't figure out why this sentence doesn't work. Then he goes back to his grammar to figure out what's going on. Same thing here. We practice the cuts. We think a lot about cutting angle, but then when we do our projects, Put it out of mind and just do your project. And if you start to get into trouble, you say, I'm getting some tear out here. Why am I getting catches here? Then you can go back to the whole idea of cutting angle. Am I using the right cutting angle? Is that what's causing my trouble? So where do we go from here? Well, one thing to consider is that uh, although we've been using a gouge uh, through this whole exploration of cutting angles, uh, the idea of cutting angles is not exclusive to gouge. It applies to any cutting tool. You have to use the right cutting angle in order to get a good finish and to avoid things like leverage catches and, and tear out and side grain. Now as well, we've been using all the tip of the gouge to make all of our cuts. At least that's the part of the gouge that initially comes in contact uh, with the wood and that's what we're interested in. That's what we're talking about cutting angle. But as you'll find soon enough, there will be situations where you cannot get the tool in the right position to make those cuts. It's simply there's, usually it's because there's wood in the way. Uh, I'm thinking off the top of my head, uh, cutting beads and end grain is one case, uh, and also as well, uh, hollowing end grain and spindle work. Uh, in both cases, it's really hard to get the tool, and sometimes you simply can't get the tool in the right place to cut that way. So the question now is, is there a completely different way of doing it, or is uh, the way we've been cutting uh, simply an optimal way of some broader principle that we have to look at, and that way we can figure out what do we do in those situations where we can't get the tool uh, because there's wood in the way, we can't get the cutting edge in where we want it to. So that's what I have for you this time. So down a shot of espresso and get out in the shop and try cutting some curves. Uh, so until next time, I'm Brian Havens and thanks for watching. cutting angle.